Welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church Online. My name is Marian Brown, one of the associate pastors, and this is our on-demand version of the sermon that will be preached on this Sunday morning. And please know that our Sunday services will be live streamed beginning at 9 a.m. for the contemporary service and 11.15 for the traditional service. If you would like to have the entire worship experience on demand, that will be available on Monday morning. We appreciate you being a part of our online community and we invite you to be active and participate through your giving. And so we thank you for your support and your generosity. Before we listen to this Sunday sermon, let's have a moment of prayer. Gracious and holy Lord, we ask that you remind us that wherever we are, we are on holy ground. And so may you help us make space. So may we receive a message that you have for us in this moment. Be in our hearts so that it's open. Be in our ears so that they are open and be a part of our lives so that we are open to receive a challenge and an invitation. Work within us now and all around us so that we may know your presence and we may feel it fully. Through a moment now of words and scripture, speak to us, amen. Let's listen to this Sunday sermon. Hello, thank you for joining us today. I'm Ben Mayfield, one of the pastors here at RUMC, and I get the honor to talk about hope for our first Sunday of Advent. Today I want to look at a powerful story in the Gospel of Luke that speaks deeply about hope, especially when we're facing struggles or challenges that seem overwhelming. The story comes from Luke chapter 8, verses 40 through 48 where we read about a woman who had been suffering for years and how she experienced both physical and emotional healing through the faith of Jesus Christ. In this passage, we meet a woman who has been dealing with a chronic illness, a bleeding condition that no doctor could heal. And for 12 long years, she suffered in silence, isolated from her community, and probably, most likely, feeling hopeless. During this time, the, the woman's physical suffering wasn't just the issue. And her culture being unwell in this way was also met considered unclean. It was cut off from society, including the temple and social gatherings. She was an outcast physically and socially. So to really put your mind and your heart to truly understand, to empathize and sympathize with this woman. Imagine having some condition that is out of your control and being cut out from every social gathering. Being in this church, you couldn't go to the temple. People walked right past you. So not only is she physically ill, she's emotionally just devastated, feeling invisible. Think about that for a moment. 12 years of, of doctors who couldn't help her. 12 years of isolation. 12 years of wondering if things would ever get better. And how often do we feel like that in our own lives? Whether it's a personal struggle or, or a family issue or maybe the weight of, of school, of social pressures, of mental health challenges, it can feel like there's no way out, no solution no end in sight. But in this woman's desperation, she hears about Jesus. She hears about Jesus and she heard the stories of his miracles. The blind seeing, the lame walking, the dead being raised. And she believes he can heal her too. So she makes her way through the crowd pushing past people, determined to get close to Jesus. And she thinks, if I can just touch the edge of his robe, I'll be healed. 
the faith that she has, the determination she has, if I can just get close to Jesus, if I can just reach out and touch just the edge of him, I will be healed because I believe in who Jesus is. How many of us wish we had that type of passion? How many of us have been in that place where we could just reach out and we're trying to? We're trying to. But here's what's so powerful. Her faith, even in its simplicity, made all the difference. She didn't need Jesus to lay his hands on her, to speak a prayer over her, or to call her out in front of everyone. She simply believed that touching his clothes was enough. And as soon as she touched him, immediately her bleeding stopped. Now here's something that, that might surprise you. Even though the crowd was huge, Jesus felt the touch. He stopped and asked and he said, who touched me? And the disciples were, were confused. The crowd was pushing from all sides and, and how could he know? But Jesus knew because her faith drew his attention. This woman came forward trembling as she had been healed and Jesus responds saying, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. Luke 8, 48. And in that moment, her physical healing was completed. But even more importantly, please hear this. Even more importantly, Jesus spoke peace into her life and calling her daughter, giving her a new identity and a restoration that just went beyond her body. So it makes you go, well, what can I learn from this story? Hope doesn't depend on how big your problem is. It depends on the size of your faith. The woman in the story had been through a lot. She had tried everything and still nothing worked for 12 years, but it wasn't about how long or difficult her struggle was. It was about her faith in Jesus. Sometimes we think that our struggles had to be big enough for Jesus to take care of, but that's not true. Jesus cares about every single detail of our lives, no matter how small or big the problem might be. We had this mentality of, well, I'll take care of the small things. I'll let Jesus take care of the big things. And Jesus goes, man, ye of little faith, give it all to me. Stop giving a peace of your life to me. Think about the bestest friends that you have, the closest friends you have. Those people probably know a lot about you, not just the big things, but they know the little things, the in-between things. And Jesus says, I'm, I'm more than just a friend. I'm your Savior. I'm your Lord. I'm your King. Let me know those little things that are going on in your life. It builds a deeper connection. And you might not be facing a physical illness, but we all have challenges that feel overwhelming at times. And the message here is that hope and faith can meet us exactly where we are. You might feel that no one can understand what you're going through or that your situation is too complicated for even God to handle. But the story shows us that Jesus can bring healing and restoration in ways we can't even imagine. But what can we learn from this story? We can learn that Jesus notices you. Even when it feels like you are lost in the crowd. And in this crowd of people, Jesus was surrounded by many, but he noticed the woman's touch. He stopped everything and asked about it in a world that feels crowded, noisy, and sometimes even isolating, Jesus sees you. No matter how small or unnoticed you might feel, he is aware of your struggles and your heart. And when you reach out in faith, he's paying attention because that's the type of savior that we serve. It's someone who notices you, especially when we're reaching out. But what can we possibly learn from this story? Faith brings healing and peace. Jesus just 
didn't heal the woman's physical body. He gave her peace. Her faith just didn't make her physically well. It brought peace to her soul. Peace that only comes from Jesus. This isn't the kind of peace that the world offers that is often temporary or circumstantial. The peace that Jesus gives lasts no matter what is going on around you. And we live in a world that often is chaotic and filled with uncertainty. And it's easy to get caught up with the stress of school. I know within student ministry, school is such a pressure. Relationships, husbands and wives, grandparents, brothers and sisters, our friends, the relationships, and the pressure of figuring out what comes next in life. But Jesus offers us peace, a peace that depends on our circumstances, does not depend on our circumstances. He offers us an inner peace, the kind that comes from knowing that he is in control, and that he's with us. And even when life is hard, Jesus is with us. But what could we possibly learn from this story? Perhaps that hope is active and you have to reach for it. That video we watched earlier uh, in the Community of Faith moment, those videos are incredible. We had so many testimonials about hope. The woman didn't wait for Jesus to come to her. She reached out for him. Hope in Jesus requires action on our part. We can't just sit back and, and wait for things to change. There's a part we have to play whether it's stepping out in faith and asking for help or simply trusting that Jesus, that Jesus is working in our lives. This woman's story challenges us to be bold and to reach out, even when things seem impossible. But what does this story matter to us? Well, I'll tell you what I think it means for us. For those in, in middle school, high school, but to everyone here. The story means that life can feel like a series of tough situations. It can be hard to balance all the things that life has with us, with, with friendships, expectations from family, all your future and, and decisions to be made, finances, relationships. It's easy to feel isolated or feel like no one understands. But this passage reminds us that no matter how deep our struggle is or how long we've been dealing with it, hope is always available. Hope is always available. Jesus calls you to reach out to him in faith, just like the woman did. He sees you. He knows you. He offers you healing, not just for your physical or external struggles, but for your inner peace, your identity, and your purpose. He doesn't just offer temporary fixes. He offers lasting peace and hope. Whatever you're facing today, take heart. Jesus can heal your heart and bring you peace, and that is a hope that is a deep hope that God offers. And even in the midst of the most challenging times, you can hold on to the fact that hope that He is always with you and He notices you and He cares. Why does this story matter? Because it's a story that allows us to, to realize and experience that we are loved, valued, and known by a Heavenly Father. And that's a hope that makes me want to keep on moving forward and reaching out towards Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us online. It is a blessing to have the gift of technology to have sermon this way. We thank you for participating. And just a reminder, if you want to see the live services, 9 a.m. on Sunday for contemporary and 1115 Sunday morning for traditional services. And always we will have the full on-demand worship experience on Monday morning. 
And if there's ever a time that you would like to join us here at the physical location, we're located at 814 Mimosa Boulevard, Roswell, Georgia. We want to be connected with you. If you have a prayer request, please let us know by emailing pray at rumc.com. And we would love for you to be a part of our ministry through your giving. If you would like to support our campus and our ministries, you can do so at rumc.com slash give. And now hear these words of a benediction. Love without fear, serve with commitment. And in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, go in peace. Amen.